we come to a very uh, interesting uh, Paul's uh, letter uh, to um, Philemon. Uh, in English, Philemon. But uh, actually, instead of Phi, it's a Philemon. That's the uh, original language. How about your country? You call it Philemon. Okay, Philemon. Okay. Now, uh, previous three prison letters, uh, Philippians, Ephesians, now Colossians, those three letters uh, uh, dealt with uh, ministry. In other words, he, Paul, sent the, uh, those letters to the church as a group. Okay. Now here, this the last letter, number four letter, Philemon, uh, was a personal letter, not ministerial letter, personal individual letter uh, to uh, Philemon. Okay, we call it Philemon and Philemon. The very interesting letter in which we will learn a lot uh, in in terms of uh, Paul's way of handling uh, his disciples in a human relationship, which we will learn a lot out of such a uh, uh, well-known and uh, top church leader like Paul, who handles a, a certain individual to persuade what Paul expected. And so we will learn that, okay? We will see that and let us apply this to our uh, life and our ministries. So I have learned a lot uh, from this letter when I <clears throat> was a young man. Okay, now here is this. So this letter was not a church ministerial letter. Okay, this letter is a personal letter. To whom? To Philemon, who is in Colosse. You see, in Colosse, which is, you know, in the tri cities. See here, Laodicea, Colosse. Here are police, tri cities, okay? Now, this letter, in the previously, we studied the Colosse, now again the Colosse, but in a special person by the name of Philemon. Philemon, Philemon, okay? Then, who is Philemon? We have to learn that, okay? He is a man of Colosse hometown man. It's Colosse man, Colossians. Okay. Also, he was known as a very successful businessman. Many slaves under him. He owned a lot of slaves. Okay. Paul converted him to Christianity. So this man became a Paul's key disciple in this area, especially in the city of Colosse. Paul's key disciples, because he, this man, being a businessman, supported financially Paul's ministries. So he was uh, Paul's ministry partner. Then in chapter 1, there's only one chapter that I put up, chapter 1, in verse 1 said, you are my partner, Paul said. And also, his wife was very active in the church ministries. That Paul always mentioned his wife's name is Appia, Appia, Appia. Uh, in verse 1, 
in chapter 1, verse 2. It's only one chapter, okay? And they worship together in his Akipa's house. That's a house church, Akipa's house. So now, church in Colosse, the church location was Akipa's, Akipa's house. In chapter 1, verse 2, uh, said that. Okay? And key person was who? Philemon. And also his wife, Apia, and also Akipa's house owner. So they are, this, all this information was in the Philemon chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. Now, then here, who is Onesimus then? Onesimus. You see here, Philemon and now Onesimus. So Onesimus, he was one of the Philemon's slave. He was Philemon's slave. Philemon owned that person, okay, as a slave. Because at the time, a business person uh, owned the person as a slave. Ownership belonged to that master. But this Philemon, uh, by the God's divine plan, I would say, he ran away from Philemon's house. He was a runaway. And when a slave ran away under the law, Roman law, he is subject to death penalty. He will be killed. The owner had the right to kill him. Okay. With that, this Philemon, former slave, ran away. It happened all the way from here to Colossae, all the way to Rome. He ran away all the way to Rome. Are you with me? Okay. All the way to Rome, escaped all the way to Rome. Now, in, in the city of Rome, we assume that the Tychicus, Tychicus, okay, evangelized him, leading him to the Lord Jesus. So this man became a Christian, okay, by Tychicus. Now, Tychicus brought him to Paul. Paul now asked him, where are you from? And he said to Paul, I am from Colossae. And I was a slave, okay, under Philemon. So Paul said, Philemon? <laughs> well, he is my disciple, Philemon. And Onesimus, okay, expressed to Paul that, Sir, I want to go back to Colossae, okay? After I uh, became a Christian, now here in Philemon, my former master, also Christians. So I am very much inspired, touched by the Holy Spirit that I want to go back to Colossae and working with my master, okay, Philemon, as a slave minister. In other words, I want to evangelize many slaves who were under the Philemon. That was uh, Onesimus' heart, burning heart for slave ministries. So he demanded Paul, Paul, 
would you help me to go back to my former uh, master and help me so that my master and me working together toward slave ministries. Okay? That is a background. Okay? Now, upon hearing that Paul decided to send him back to Philemon. Okay? Now, his, what action did Paul take upon hearing that demand? Paul wrote a personal letter to Philemon. Personal letter. That letter provides us very uh, interesting uh, information. We will study that. Are you ready? Yes. Now, and in the letter, Paul was asking, would you forgive this young man and accept him as your ministerial partner in the letter? Okay. And he was asking Tychicus, Tychicus, who will be carrying the letter of what? Ephesian letter and Colossian letter, okay? And asking Tychicus, would you take this, my personal letter to Philemon, along with, okay? And also, you take this Onesimus along with you. Okay, and you explain the situation on behalf of me. So Tychicus was a key man, okay, in arranging uh, this matter here. So Tychicus carrying Paul's personal letter to Philemon and gave the letter to Philemon and plead for, means he's begging, petition, he Plead for forgiving Onesimus. Okay? That was uh, Paul's direction to Tychicus. So Tychicus obeyed. Oh, sir, okay, I will do it. Okay? Why not? Because I am on the way to Ephesus. And Colosse, so I can do that. So, okay, Onesimus, you follow me. Okay, from where? From, from Rome, now Tychicus and Onesimus, they departed together. Okay, can you see that background? Okay, now they travel together to Ephesus and to Colossae. Now, with that background, Paul, we, we want to see what kind of a, a letter contents inside. Okay? What stories, what kind of a letter uh, Paul uh, wrote? Okay? It's always you remember in the last lessons that Paul has a certain writing styles that we should learn from him. Okay? In the same way here, here, Paul's writing style always starts with what? His identity. Who Paul is. But here is a very interesting uh, expression of his identification here. Start with Paul. I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. That was, he was telling who? Philemon. Okay. Philemon, I am a prisoner of Jesus Christ. And also, Timothy is also my brother, also prisoner of Jesus Christ. But Timothy actually, Listen, his son, 
spiritual son. So first and second Timothy, we will, we will be studying later. Paul said, you are my son. But over here, he did not say my son Timothy. He said, my brother Timothy. Okay. To him. Because he, Paul, will call, okay, Philemon, you are my brother as well. So he weighed the same level. Okay. Timothy and who? Philemon. Because Philemon will be encouraged by that title. Okay. Equal with what? Timothy. Because he said, wow, I am equal position uh, as Timothy uh, uh, by my teacher Paul. With that okay, mind in his, instead of, you know, my son, he called Timothy my brother. You are my brother, Philemon, and Timothy also my brother. That was uh, his uh, introduction, okay? Then, right after that, always greetings comes. Greetings. He was greeting to Philemon first. You, Philemon, my dear friend, a very close expression. My friend, instead of, instead of my disciple, Okay, my friend and my fellow workers. You see that? It's a very close, intimate, expressing intimate relationship. Very close relationship. Like me, you are my, all my disciples here. They say, instead of, instead of you know, I, I say, my, my friend and my fellow workers, my partners, how would, you, how would you feel? Uh, better, you know, better feeling and closer feeling. You see, this is the way he uses that kind of, you know, languages. You will, you have to learn this. Okay. The situation like this, he, he was, he, he was selecting proper, very gentle languages. Instead of, you know, high and ordering, commanding languages. Okay? Now, here say, also, first greeting to Philemon. But Philemon was not alone. He, Paul was thinking that his wife, because his wife has a very uh, responsible position. Okay? He was, she was in the responsible position, decision making, you know, process, whether allow Onesimus, okay, be, to be partner or not. Because Paul thinking of his wife. Paul did not write, uh, always in his letters, other letters, he did not mention wife name. Are you aware of that? Okay. But this is the first time. Okay. Indicating and addressing his wife. Because this is, because Paul needs his wife's assistant. So, up here. And he said, my sister, he said. You see? My sister. And also, Akipas, who is Akipas? The church house owner. Because he's a very influential man. In order to accept Onesimus, Paul needs Philemon's acceptance, Apias' acceptance, and Akipas' acceptance. Not only that, church members' acceptance. So he greeted to Philemon, Apia, Akipus, 
and church members. Okay? Then he said, grace to you always. Peace from God and Father and the Lord Jesus with you. You know, he always uses that, okay, a, a benediction. It's a kind of benediction. That is in verse 3. That's always introduction and identifying who he is and greetings to those necessary people. Then, letter, always after that, thanking first. Thanking and prayer in verses 4 and 7. He, he did not ask, you know, right after that. Asking comes the later. Always thanking in our letter, in his letter, and thanking them. He said, I always thank my God as I remember you in my prayer. You see, this indicates that he, Philemon, even in, even I am in this prison, I always remember you and I always pray for you. See, that the good indication that I love you so much. You are my true disciple. So I remember you all the time. That was that, okay? And then he said this. What kind of uh, uh, memory Paul had? He said that, I know and I hear your faith in the Lord Jesus. You are very faithful man to the Lord Jesus. And also, you love all your church members. You, you are a loving man. You are a loving leader. Although you are a rich man, possess, possess, possess many servants, slaves under you, but you are a very humble man, man of prayer and showing compassion over church members. See, this is an exhortation, okay? Encouragement to who? That man. Who is man? Philemon. Because Paul needs his, his, his help. And also, his first continues to say, I've been praying for you because I really ask God, you, Continue to actively sharing the word of God. In other words, I want you, I want, I pray Jesus that, Lord, would you help this Philemon active evangelist and producing, resulting in many fruits out of his ministries. Eh? That was his prayer. He said, I've been praying for you this. See? His feeling would be what? Very comfortable and encouraged already out of that, you know, comment about him. Now, not only that, he said that, thank you for your, your help, okay? Your love. That, that means while I was there, you helped me financially and other uh, you know, matters. So I always remember your love given to me. And out of that, it gives me a great joy and encouragement. I remember that. Always you too and me too. Always remember when you write a letter, Okay, and when you have conversation with some people, always give that kind of uh, encouragement and appreciation. That is very necessary. If Paul had that kind of mentality. The Holy Spirit inspired him, okay, uh, right down in that matter. 
He said, because of your, you, my brother, he said, because of you, my brother, I have refreshed the heart of uh, my, I was ref refreshed, I was, my heart always uh, got refreshed. Not only that, all the church members, all the saints also got refreshed their heart. What a comment, okay? That was a comment that Paul made to who? Philemon, okay? After, after exhorted him such a way, then starting right here, Paul now asking, okay, what I need from you. Starting right here. And then Paul was asking. He didn't start that asking request from the beginning. Okay? You should learn that. I have learned that when I was a young man. Out of the short letter, Phil Lemon. So I've been practicing uh, the Paul's way of dealing with his disciples. Okay? Now he was asking this. Paul pleaded for Onesimus. Ones talking about on the slave. Okay? Philemon, I, all the men, at the time Paul was 55 years old man. Okay? He was born in five, and he was writing that letter at 60. So 60 minus 5, 55. I, all men, prisoner of Christ, appeal to you, appeal to you, Philemon, okay, for my son Onesimus. He said that. Onesimus, your former slave, Paul said, he is my son. <laughs> See? See, Philemon was shocked by the, you know, comment. Oh, my former slave, I was about to kill him. Paul said, poor son. You see? He said, former, in the past, my son was useless to you. You supposed to kill him. You have a right to kill him. Useless to you. But, he said, but, Philemon, now Onesimus is very useful both to me and to you. He said that. Okay. Paul always said that. Not only to me, but useful to you. For God's sake. Okay. Why? Because it was Paul's challenge that you have to accept him and make him a slave ministry evangelist, okay, along with you. That was Paul's mind. So this man in the past useless, okay, enemy to you, but now he is useful not only to you, but also to me. You see here, this is a very challenging. Okay, okay. That's why. That's why I'm sending this useful man. Okay, to you. Okay, I'm sending. This is what the letter said. And then he said, "I would like to keep him with me." You see here. I can keep this useful man, Onesimus, with me in Rome. But so that I can use him, he can serve me. However, I decided to send him to work with you in your hometown for slave ministries. Now, therefore, 
he is no longer a slave in my sight. Dear brother, he is long, no longer is a slave to you. He is your partner. Now, if, he said, if, Philemon, you, Philemon, consider me as a partner, and Onesimus is also partner to you. Are you with me? It's very challenging now. Okay. If you have done anything wrong, in other if he, if Onesimus made anything wrong to you, okay, if, and he owes a lot of money, because he was a slave, was a money, okay, if owes anything, if you lose money because of his, his, his runaway, and Paul said this, don't ask him to pay money. You charge, you charge it to me. I will pay for anything that you lost out of that. I will pay for. See? I will charge it to me. I will pay back. Then it's interesting part here. Philemon, you know you owed me a lot. You see? Philemon, you owed me a lot because I, I gave you new life. Okay? You received the gospel out of me. I served you. And now you are now a top leader in your hometown. So you owed me. Okay? Therefore, you, if you want, if you want a payment from Onesimus, okay, then you charge me. That means I will pay instead of, okay, Onesimus pay you back. Okay? Then he said, I wish my brother, Philemon, I might have some benefit from you. In other words, that if you give Onesimus free and, and accept him as your partner, then I will receive a benefit from you. Okay? It's good for me. And refreshing my heart. Therefore, please, okay, please, you accept him. Then he said, I have 100% confidence in you that you will obey, you will obey what I requested. Okay? Then he said, you will do even more than I ask. Can you see it? You will obey more than, more than I even ask for. This is the way he's dealing with his disciples. It's a great encouragement. Okay? There's no way that Philemon could say no. There's no way. Okay? And then it's interesting that Paul said this. Philemon, someday I will visit you. Even if he's in the prison. And said, he said this, prepare my guest room. <laughs> that means that prepare a guest room for me. That means I will visit you to make sure whether you obey what I requested you. Hmm? Then he said, my brothers in Rome now greeting you. 
That's the ending part, okay? He said, my brothers in Rome, like Epaphras, Aristarchus, Mark, even Demas, and look, their names recorded right here. Then, you see, that means that these my brothers are, they are witnesses here, okay? They are also requesting you to do and to obey what I have re requested you. So accept him, and his ending is, grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. That's the ending of the letter. See, with that uh, beautiful Paul's personal letter to Philemon, okay, it teaches us many uh, aspects of Paul's leadership character where we uh, ought to learn a lot, where I have learned a lot out of his small, short letter, Philemon. May all of you learn the way of handling, uh, you know, this kind of uh, people uh, in this way, out of this letter. So may God's continuing uh, inspirations and teachings and leadership style that you have imposed on Paul be available in our uh, leadership. Okay? Amen? May God bless all of you. Amen.